Hi everybody, welcome to IndyCar on Sunday. Uh, what is it today? The 10th, was it? Let me just check the dates, you know what I'm like with the dates. Oh yes, so it's the 10th of March and today, there, well there's so many things going on actually, it's taken me a while to collate all the news this morning to try and <coughs> present it to you uh, in a way that actually makes any sense. However, the general uh, sort of synopsis of everything that's happening at the moment uh, is mostly uh, orbiting around the whole Brexit um, scenario at the moment. So let me start with one or two uh, interesting new things that have happened with Brexit. Interesting just because they are putting the, the Conservative Party into even more turmoil than it already is, uh, and also partly because uh, a new poll out today has kind of thrown a spanner in the works a little bit uh, with regards to what happens with no deal Brexit. So first of all let's have a look at what's actually going on at the moment with Brexit. The first thing I wanted to mention to you was uh, Michel Barnier who's the chief negotiator for the EU and what his comments were uh, yesterday. Now this is the EU's response to Mrs May's uh, continuous niggling and nagging at them to try and give her something, anything, some kind of titbit that would allow her uh, some comfort, allow her the idea that Britain could somehow leave the backstop um, after a, a no deal Brexit. So what Michel Barnet has said, and this is very carefully worded, but the upshot is that the EU says that in the event of a no deal Brexit, the backstop would come into play temporarily to protect the Northern Irish border to keep it open and that the UK may leave it uh, at any point after that but Northern Ireland and Ireland have to stay in it. So in other words Northern Ireland must stay in the backstop but the rest of the UK can leave it which again puts Mrs May into the DUP's clutches because they have said that uh, whatever happens they don't want to be treated uh, any better than the rest of the UK and of course Northern Ireland remaining in the backstop after a no deal Brexit would be considerably better for Northern Ireland than, uh, than disappearing off with a, uh, the, the rest of the United Kingdom and causing uh, a fence and border post to be built across the island of Ireland once more. So Mrs May is now in a situation where Barney has said yes the United Kingdom can exit the backstop after a no deal Brexit but Northern Ireland must remain and that means splitting the UK. The one thing that the DUP hates the most is the bitter pill that the Tories are going to have to swallow if they want to leave the backstop after a no deal Brexit, if there's a no deal Brexit. Now that brings me neatly to the next point, which is the no deal Brexit itself. Now, Mrs May, I think, was gambling on the idea that people would be so terrified of the no deal Brexit that they would automatically want to vote for her, her deal. That all the politicians and all the politicians electorate, their constituents, would be putting pressure on those MPs to vote for Mrs May's deal because they didn't want a no deal Brexit. Now the Daily Express today has published the results of a poll and they completely blow that myth out of the water because 44% of those, and I'm presuming this is mostly in England and Wales but I haven't got the figures in front of me, but 44% of the people who were polled, uh, who presumably are British uh, voters, said that they were not scared of a no-deal Brexit uh, and were happy for that to go ahead. Some 30%, and remember this is not uh, a sort of 100% coverage, there is some area of doubt, only 30% of people were dead set against the no-deal Brexit. So where that leaves you is with the majority of, I'm presuming, English voters are not scared of a no-deal Brexit and are not going to put pressure on their MPs to back Mrs May's deal. So that kind of skews the whole uh, pressure on Mrs May even more. It now makes it more likely that there will be a no-deal Brexit rather than less likely. So as well as Mrs May being uncomfortable about the idea of the, the backstop applying only to Northern Ireland and England and Wales being allowed to leave, there's, there's this added pressure now that um, 
most of the the people who have been polled by an admittedly very very right wing paper uh, with with a comrades poll have said that they don't mind a no deal Brexit. They're quite happy for that to be the result if Mrs May's deal is voted down. Which leads me on to the next part of the Brexit uh, Greek tragedy, if you, if you will. Right? It gets worse, uh, and it gets worse for another reason. This time, it is the Brexit um, wing of the Tory Party, and some seventy something. I think it's more than seventy. Uh, Tory MPs have signed some kind of agreement which says that they say that they will make sure that Mrs May does not uh, does not remain after June. So in the event that Mrs May's deal is a disaster and it doesn't go through and there's a no deal, they are going to remove her almost immediately and they have a, a short list of the usual suspects lined up to take her place, one of them being obviously Boris Johnson, the other one being Sajid Javid, uh, and I can't remember who the other one was. There was one other um, who was... On, oh, Jeremy Hunt, yep. The, the, the well-known um, rhyming slang name. Anyway, Jeremy Hunt was the third one. So you could have any one of these three as your PM during a no-deal Brexit uh, with this very one-sided uh, deal where Northern Ireland has to stay in the backstop where the rest of the UK can leave. So it's a very, very uncomfortable time if you're a Tory leader and Mrs May must be onto her umpteenth packet of pampers by now with all that's going on round about. And remember, there's only two more days before the big vote uh, and then there's another big vote and then another big vote after that uh, about no deal Brexit. So we've got three big votes coming up. None of this is looking very good for Mrs May's deal, contrary to what she might have hoped. Uh, the, the one <laughs> one morsel that was supposed to save her neck about the backstop turns out to be a poisoned uh, a piece of poisoned bait on a hook which basically will keep Northern Ireland in a customs union uh, with the Republic indefinitely if there's a no-deal Brexit. And I'm sure the DUP is probably spitting blood and feathers at the moment as well because this is the one thing that they really, really hate the most, and Barney has just said that that's the only way that the UK would be allowed to leave uh, with no deal. Now that brings me to my next point, which is even more interesting, and that is that the Tories themselves, some of their top people, are now saying that Scotland really should have a referendum vote. They really are entitled to have the Section 30 order. And I can say that with utter confidence because both David Davis and our own uh, Ruth Davidson up here in Scotland have both said that they believe that uh, one nation should not stop another nation from leaving a treaty. Now, David Davis said on Andrew Marshall this morning that he knew of no other treaty where one country had to ask permission of the other to leave it. Now this is very interesting. He believes that the European Union is being unfair because he is claiming that the UK has to ask permission from the EU to leave the treaty. That means that David Davis, by default, or by inference, is now saying that Scotland must have a Section 30 order because we are a nation in treaty with another nation and we are being forced to ask permission for this Section 30 order. And David Davis believes that shouldn't be the case, that we should have the right to a Section 30 order. And in 2016, Ruth Davidson said, and you can, you can look this quote up, that in the case of a Section 30 order, she said that the British government should not block that. And that means that both these top Tories agree that Scotland should have a Section 30 order. Otherwise, everything that they've said in these two quotations is a complete lie just made up for the cameras. So you see where this is all going. The Tories are now in a knot. They've got themselves into such a fix, such a complete uh, jam up with this Brexit, that they're now forced to eat their own words now. They're, they're claiming it's unfair of the EU to demand that, that they have to ask permission to leave uh, and that they know of no other 
treaty in the world where this happens and yet they have got the very same treaty with us and they're denying us the permission which Davis is so vehement should be uh, unnecessary. So thank you David Davis, come and uh, do some speaking up here in Scotland and tell us just how you believe that we should get the Section 30 order now. So contrary to everything that uh, Jackson Carlaw last, last week was saying about <laughs> us having an illegal referendum and him trying to split the, the SNP with a very, very stupid, nonsensical, fictitious story which he spread about the media to absolutely zero effect because nobody believes it is now blown out of the water by his own Brexit Secretary David Davis who believes that it's not fair for one country to have to ask permission of another to end a treaty. Anyway, that's about it for this big sort of Brexit pot boil that I've got going at the moment. But you can see just how badly this entire uh, Brexit debacle is, is going for the Tories. They're in total uproar that the MPs are already plotting to stab Theresa in the back if her Brexit deal fails this week. And we also now know that most of the the voting public in England don't care whether there's a no-deal Brexit or not. They are quite happy. They are totally oblivious to the risks. They think it's not going to hurt them. And they think that their MPs can quite, you know, with, with comfort, just say no to Mrs May's deal and everything will be all right. Well, we know that it won't be, uh, but they're not going to listen to Scotland. So I think we really should just I'll basically go down the shop and buy a bag of popcorn and we'll sit and watch what happens with this so-called meaningful vote on, on the 12th. Now, if it goes Mrs May's way and she gets her deal, it's going to be by a very narrow margin. And even if she does get her deal, there is still going to be a big negative impact across Scotland, particularly our businesses that export into Europe, and that's more then half of Scotland's exports will be affected by this. So there's still a negative impact uh, going to be had from our point of view. Well, anyway, that's about it for now. I don't want to labour the point anymore, but I just thought I would stick the knife in and twist it round a bit to the Tories today because they really are in such a terrible mess. And they've even made a mess of trying to undermine the SNP and to split the Yes campaign down the middle. They failed miserably to do it. Uh, simply because we now know that the Section 30 order must be given because David Davis says so, and so does Ruth Davidson. So we have two Tories to thank, really, for supporting our bid to get the Section 30 order. So I think when we do get it, we'll just send a wee thank you note to Ruth Davidson and a wee card maybe to David Davis to say thank you for, for backing Scotland in this way. We're very grateful. Anyway, I'm off. Have a great day. Um, I'll be back again on Monday, well, tomorrow, uh, and also presenting the show as usual, uh, Broadcasting Scotland, Thursday night, Scotland at 7, at 7pm. 7 I'll see you all then as well. Bye for now.